This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Welcome to Her Story, The Journey to Winning a Seat at the Table. I'm your host, Mary Jane Murray, and this program is a series of conversations with very inspirational women in leadership roles. Stories are a tapestry of lifelong events and experiences. So let's enjoy and explore the journey. My guest today is Sarah Cowley, and I've had the pleasure of sitting around community planning tables with Sarah and just where her leadership skills shine. I, Sarah is a registered nurse with a master's in nursing from UFT, and uh, she is also a certified health executive with 10 years or over 10 years of organizational and strategic leadership engaging stakeholders in the community in healthcare, uh, locally, uh, nationally, provincially, uh, regionally, and I got them all in the wrong order, but anyway, we got them all in. And um, uh, currently, uh, Sarah has launched Sarah C Consulting, and this gives her the opportunity to lead in rural health and wellness and also she is currently the lead on the community uh, safety and well-being plan through the police services board. Well, that's a mouthful, uh, Sarah. So we often see very accomplished women in leadership roles. However, leadership can emerge at any age and at any stage and this is Sarah's journey. Welcome, Sarah, and thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for inviting me, very, Mary and Jane. I'm very happy uh, to be able to share my, uh, my travels, my journey along uh, the road to get where I am today. Well, as an adult, you've been very entrenched in the health in healthcare. But let's go back to the early years to see what those that what that journey has been and what those influences have been. Sure. So uh, I recently shared with someone, they asked me, uh, you know, tell us something that we wouldn't know about you. And I said, you know, when I look back on my career so far, I see that I came to coaching of people and individuals very naturally uh, because I was actually raised by people who were coaches in different aspects of my life. Um, my mom coached my sister and I in our athletics teams in high school. I was, uh, we were very involved in team sports and my mother was our coach for soccer and basketball. So I learned a lot of skills from her around team playing. Um, and then my father works in fi has worked in finance for decades, um, and he's a coach with his employees. And so I learned a lot as I got older. I learned a lot from him in talking about our careers um, and the approaches he takes with employees and how I integrated that into my work. So uh, as I look back, it, it was very natural that I got into leadership. Um, but at the time, <laughs> it didn't feel like that. It just felt like when I started in nursing, um, I heard, was hearing things. People have always historically been naturally drawn to sharing with me, which is how I got into mental health and addiction nursing. Um, but I was hearing from my colleagues, you know, challenges, things that they, they would hope would have changed in the way the work was being done and how they were supporting their clients. And I didn't see those messages getting passed up um, to, to the decision makers. And I thought, that's, that's needed, right? We need to stay connected with the front line and the people doing the work and make sure that we are removing those roadblocks. Um, and so actually I got into my first management position when I was only 26 and uh, was much younger than most of the people I was managing, but found that, uh, that connection through my master's in nursing program. So a, a woman that I was in that program with uh, got in touch with me and said she had a job at the hospital for sick children that she thought would be ideally suited for me coming from mental health and addictions. It was a management role there. 
And then from there, uh, the connections I've been able to make with people have really held me in good stead. The opportunities for learning over the years and to build my knowledge base as a leader, um, that, that's been really, uh, really key as I've moved through the journey. Well, um, there are several things that I want to explore from the comments you made. And one of them is, what led you to the healthcare field in the first place? It's a good question. And actually, it was pretty pretty pragmatic at the time. Um, in high school, I had so many interests. I loved art. I loved science. I loved English. Um, athletics, of course, were always a part of our family and growing up. Um, but what I really was drawn to was uh, helping people. And so when I thought about where, where I could do that, um, my sister was considering medicine. She had always wanted to be a doctor. And I thought, I want to go to school and I want to I do a program that then allows me to get a job and has choice because I have so many diverse interests. I wanted to be able to get into the workforce and know um, that I would have multiple options for a career in helping people. And so nursing really drew me because when you graduate with a, a Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree, you can work in so many various fields. You can work in hospital, community, uh, you can work in long-term care, you can work with you know, pharmacy, uh, with farm, big pharma firms, you can do all kinds of things. And so I thought, well, that's a good idea. And when I got into nursing school, I thought, emergency room, that's where I'm going to work. I'm really good, fast-paced, I can make decisions on the fly. Um, and then I fell in love with mental health and addictions. And as I look back, I realized that that was because I have a propensity to help, want to help people become the best version of themselves, whether that's from a, a mental health and addiction perspective, whether it's within their career as uh, an employee or a leader themselves. Um, I have uh, a real passion for that kind of growth and development and helping people uh, learn more about themselves and see where they can uh, thrive uh, and where they can come to the table and have their voices heard as well. So nursing gave me that background to be able to do a variety of different things. Um, and um, it's, it's really, it's been a career that has allowed me to branch into other parts of services as well, different sectors. So. Was, was there a, um, a pivotal moment that actually led you to mental health and addiction? There was, yes. So um, at McMaster, which is where I got my undergraduate degree, uh, the first year in nursing is spent in learning assessment skills and communication theory and practicing those in labs. And then from there, you actually had to, at the time that I was in school, you actually had to write a, a a paper on why you wanted particular placements in the community. And so I was matched when I <clears throat> did that um, for looking at mental health and I thought counseling would be a very interesting field for me because of my ability to relate to people. My mother always said I was a chameleon in school. I could connect with lots of different people from different backgrounds with different interests. And so I thought mental health would be interesting. And I actually got matched with uh, a woman who had been 30 years um, at St. Joseph's in Hamilton, uh, 30 years in the outpatient clinic since that outpatient clinic started, a registered nurse there. And I worked with her in my first semester of, uh, of my second year. And from that point on, I was hooked. I was just hooked. This woman worked in independent practice with the support of a psychiatrist, and she was making a difference every session in people's lives, helping them become stronger, better versions of themselves from whatever their perspective was, what better was. Um, she was focused on helping them achieve those goals. And I loved, the part I loved about it was the intricacies because every day with a client is different. Every conversation with a client is different. Um, and I loved the challenge of that. It was more than just running a blood test and knowing what the illness was and giving the, the client a medication or applying a dressing, which are all very valid and important pieces of work. I've always said to my girlfriends in nursing, it's good that we all have a different love in nursing. Um, but the, the intricacies and the challenge of getting to know people, finding out what motivates and drives them, and helping them uh, leverage that drive and that motivation into positive life choices or growth, um, you know, helping them find uh, housing, find employment, those pieces of work were really interesting to me to help them grow and thrive in a community and then pay that forward, right, be able to help others as well. So that's what really drew me to mental health and addictions. Well, that's, it's really great to have someone, a role model, 
that engages you and propels you forward in that. Um, one of the things that I'm noticing is this really um, strong confidence level that perhaps was developed from your participation in sports in, a, in your younger years. Um, but I'm also in wondering about when you found uh, you, that you had a voice and that your voice actually mattered and when in the healthcare field you found that your voice was being heard. Yeah, so definitely it did, some of it did stem back to my athletic career, um, although I always laugh because I wasn't the flash player, as we would have called it when I was playing sports. I was the, the background support. I was very well-rounded in many of the supports, and I was kind of the player that flew under the radar. Um, and that actually has driven my personality and leadership as well. Uh, and, and I think the confidence stems from knowing what I know and knowing what I don't know and being com comfortable saying, I don't have that answer and I don't know that information. I've never experienced that before. But also knowing that I've built relationships with people, give backgrounds, experiences, age groups, professions, and knowing I can draw on those people, that I can go to them and say, I need to learn more about this, or I need to know more about what's happening in this area with this, this piece of work, and knowing that they're invested in my success as well because of the relationships I've built with them. Um, and that, I think, has contributed to the confidence to the voice piece. I have found that over the years, it's, it's come naturally because I am very driven to make the right decisions, whether that um, impacts me positively or not. Um, I, I know that the work I do is about me. It's about serving the community. And so um, finding my voice, I've kind of been pushed into that by lots of people because they feel I, I speak on behalf of a variety of people who are values driven in the work, people who maybe aren't as comfortable speaking up. Um, and so I, early on, I would say I was kind of pushed into that, um, but also very comfortable having those, those uncomfortable conversations with people, you know, challenging, challenging them to think differently about what they're doing or their perceptions about a particular issue, being comfortable to ask the questions, I think, is what started um, with my voice, being able to say, I, can you tell me more about that? I don't know enough to have an opinion yet, but I'd like to. Um, and then over the years now, certainly um, coming into consulting, uh, moving out of an organization where I had a team and I was, I was driven by the work my team was doing, moving into consulting has been, I think, pivotal in finding even more of my voice because I have seen the, the requests come in for my work in various agencies across, of, across our communities, and they have all stemmed from my work at various partnership tables where people have seen the work that I do, my commitment to the communities, that I work hard and I'm invested in the success of all the organizations who are working on behalf of our communities. Um, and so that's really, I think, driven my comfort now to be able to say to people, I know this and I can support you with this piece of work or this policy um, or this uh, community table, um, and I have some knowledge to share. I don't know everything. I'll never know everything, but I have some knowledge and exper expertise to share, um, and that's really helped. I am much more comfortable now, Mary Jane, even, that, even compared to a couple of years ago, I would say, um, and I've had people tell me that, you know, when we've had meetings um, or even when I've interviewed for jobs recently. Recently, right? Because as a consultant, I'm still looking at, at a variety of jobs in the community. People have said, you know, you present um, in a way that we feel tied to, that's accessible to us. We feel engaged when we're talking with you. Um, and you seem really comfortable um, being able to share your experiences, which I think helps people to, to really come to the table as well. And that's, that's something that I've seen over the years is that I have a talent for bringing people to the table for finding out what they need and what drives them and, and getting the people to the table to have the conversation because we can't do any of this work alone. Well, I think one of the comments that, that you brought forward was the fact that you had connected with many community tables prior to branching out on your own. So that, mm -hmm. that within the community, because those community tables have leadership 
um, from a wide spectrum in our communities and decision makers around the health and well-being of, of the, our communities going forward. And when people spend time around those community tables, they, everyone gets to know you. They get to know your skills and how you're growing, how you're engaging other people, how you're respectful. And what that does is that gives you a leap forward when you decide to make other decisions in your life. So we can't underestimate all that background work that was being done initially, Sarah, when um, it wasn't sort of in your long-term plan to necessarily be branching out on your own, but that was the forerun and the experience and the skill development that led you to your consulting business. It absolutely did, Mary Jane, and what I tell people is you cannot, in leadership, underestimate the impact and the value of the relationships you build. Every piece of the work we do is relational and is driven by the connections we have, um, and that, that really, as you say, is what supported me. I didn't think I'd branch into consulting, but a, a colleague who I had worked with for several years prior to uh, starting this business called me and said, I have a piece of work that needs to be done that we have funding for, and I think you would be perfect at this. Would you consider it? And I said, I've never been a consultant before. How does this work? And she said, I will teach you. I've done it before, and I will teach you. I'll walk you through it. And so she was willing to hire me as a consultant with no experience as a consultant, and she taught me what I needed to do around a variety of pieces. Um, and then that led to more contracts and more jobs and more connections in the community. Um, and it, it's those relationships that matter. You can't underestimate the connections um, and the importance of getting to know people, right? Really getting to know people and letting them know that whatever you can offer, you'll do what you can to help them further their goals for their organization in, in helping the community. That's been my perspective. Those relationships are key and are pivotal um, in, in driving not just the work of organizations, but individuals forward, right, to, to that job satisfaction, to knowing that we have a, an impact and make a difference. Um, that's where I get that, that satisfaction from, is having those relationships and knowing that people will reach out to me and that I can reach out to them and we'll work together on things, that it's always a group effort. One of the commonalities, Sarah, that I have found in interviewing inspirational women in, through this program is that they, um, they launched into something because someone had encouraged them or nudged them and said, I see something in you that will, um, will help us along and nudge you along into something, to a new adventure. And that's a commonality that sometimes we don't see it in ourselves, but someone else sees that skill and then nudges along and then the journey just gets better and better. It does. I completely agree, Mary Jane. And I've reflected on, on lead, women in leadership as you know, you invited me to, to join this show. Um, I do find it, it often ties to women because we're often very comfortable supporting um, and we, we tend to not always be driven to take the lead right from the start, that we maybe come into it more gradually in a supportive role. Um, I came into executive healthcare leadership because my team needed my support. So the people who reported to me needed more from me. Um, and my organization needed more from me at that specific point in time. Um, and so though, although I had thought I wasn't ready for that, I knew with their support um, that we could achieve that and that I would be able to do that work. Um, and it, it was wonderful. It, it, I can't say enough about um, the opportunity to learn and grow with that team as an executive leader. Um, and so many lessons learned now I've been able to take into the other pieces of work that I do and into the organizations that I've been supporting over the last couple of years. Absolutely. Now, one of the things about um, the healthcare system and mental health in particular is that um, it takes a lot of energy. And it, it can be very draining, it can be overwhelming, and we work from one 
crisis to another crisis in terms of whatever's ha happening within the community in mental health, addictions, and of course the, the current pandemic that we're going through now. So one of the things that, that I think is that you are taking care of everybody else. Who takes care of you? Um, so I would say historically the key piece of the work I've done in leadership and in building my teams, whatever that team looks like, whether it's within an organization or an external group of, of colleagues and friends, uh, people that I've gotten to know really well, um, I think it's really, really important that we we connect and we stay connected and, and that it's not always about the work. It can be, you know, a lot of the time about the work that we're connecting and sharing our thoughts and feelings and those challenges, really working that through. Um, but that we continue, people feel the most um, valued in their work and the most engaged in their work when they feel that they're driving towards some kind of positive outcome. And so certainly what I have found is that people want to know that their, their concerns are being heard and that we're constantly creating an environment where we're making improvements. That is certainly something I've seen drives people and helps them feel taken care of, care of, right? So if they have a concern, we take it seriously. We look at opportunities to make improvements, and then we drive that work forward. Um, and that is where I have seen the, the greatest feeling of being taken care of in, in an organization. Um, and certainly I have felt the most taken care of, where people hear me and are willing to listen to the concerns and to work towards solutions. So my teams take care of me. The people I work with take care of me. Uh, my family takes care of me. My husband has been extremely supportive over the years um, with regards to my career. It has been a driving force uh, in our relationship uh, that he knows I am driven to achieve and support communities. And that does often take more time, um, you know, whether it's uh, board meetings after work. I'm a, I'm a member of a community board as well now. Um, that takes evening time. Um, but I think it's really important, and, and my husband agrees, that our children see uh, that we are driven, whether it's his career or my career, that it's important work too. Uh, and we explain to them and, and help them understand the impact that can have on the community and on my life as well. I feel at my best when I am fully engaged in my family life and fully engaged in my career that I know I'm giving my best in both of those realms. I certainly was not a mom to stay at home for years. Um, my husband's background is working with children, and certainly he took a, a good chunk of each of my our leaves when our children were born um, so that I could get back to work because that's when I feel at my best, when I have the balance of work and home life. Oh, that's, that's good because what, what you've done is you've recognized your skills and talents within your own self as well as your own needs explain that very carefully and develop the family balance that is going to support the, the entire family. Sarah, do you have any words of wisdom that you would like to pass on to, to women who are, who are watching the program and perhaps have not seen themselves as a potential uh, leader or as they have, um, you know, uh, sitting around a planning table and having a voice. Do you have any words of wisdom to pass on to them? Find your passion. If you are passionate about something, whether it's a, a sector or a population or an organization, find what you're passionate about and then make those connections. Really dive into what you want to do, what you think is important. Um, find the people who, who are connected with you around those values and that drive. Uh, make, build those relationships and really leverage those relationships. And don't underestimate, uh, and I know I did this for years, I always, even still there's times I think of myself as a, as a younger person in the field. Um, and I, you know, I have almost 20 years experience now working in healthcare um, and now branching out into social services. And I think you can't underestimate the knowledge you bring to the table because all of us have a different perspective and all of us have a different filter and a lens. 
Um, and all of those those lenses um, are important around the table when we are making decisions because we all represent one slice of the pie in the experience that, that builds our community. You know, we talk, talked at a recent meeting about the quilt, right? The quilt of our community and how we weave that all together. Um, each person around the table, each person who's living in our community has a square in that quilt or is the thread that holds it together. I see myself more as the thread that brings a lot of those pieces together. Um, so you need to find your passion, find the people who resonate with you, um, and really see yourself as having something to share. We all have something to share, and it's about bringing that to the table. Well, actually, just to sum that up, is that that women, the voice of women actually matters, and and mm -hmm. we need to sit at those planning tables and express our our our. Uh, viewpoint and our voice, whether it's a soft voice and then gradually uh, becoming more confident. Um, I have a quote here, uh, Sarah, from uh, something that you had written that I think really kind of sums up the work that you've done in healthcare. And that is, um, we are assisting people before they get to a crisis point. And that I think encapsulates a lot of the work that you have done in the healthcare field around prevention and setting up prevention systems so that we are actually building healthier communities and, and starting at that beginning point. Um, and yes, yes, you were working at the end point where there was the crisis, but I think um, your perspective on healthcare is so valuable because it is at the prevention stage. Let's get there before the crisis point. So absolutely. Uh, uh, did you want to comment to that? Well, just to say, I think that my career, you know, has happened in reverse. I started in acute care where we were seeing those crisis situations and it's it's driven through into the community. And now even with my work with the safety and well-being planning, more upstream. We, we need to do better. It benefits the government and their funding streams. Um, it benefits the residents in our communities and the agencies serving them to look at upstream interventions. We need to be creating healthier communities and healthier families so that people don't end up in circumstances that stress our systems um, and that require them to go through really traumatic experiences. Um, these, these things can be stopped, but it requires a huge investment up front way early, way before these situations happen. Oh, well, thank you. Um, and Sarah, I am so glad that you're in that leadership role. But we're at the one minute mark and we're just about going to wrap up here. And I have two little questions for you that I gave you a heads up on. And one of them is, in all of this, Sarah, what brings you joy? Oh, what brings me joy is working with like-minded individuals, people who are driven to make the right decisions and to do better every day. We all have days where we're not at our best, but to do better every day in pursuit of healthier communities. Um, that really drives me. That brings me joy. Oh, that's wonderful. And do you have a, a phrase, very quickly, do you have a phrase that runs in your head every day that propels you through everything? It all, all matters. Every little piece, whether you think that it's uh, of huge benefit right now or not, it all matters. Every step we take and every piece of work we do matters. Thank you, Sarah. And I thank you so much for being our guest today. So join me next time on her story, The Journey to Winning a Seat at the Table for another inspirational story. the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us or connect with us on social media. What kind of show do you want to see on Rogers TV? What interests you? Log on to rogerstv.com, fill out a show proposal, and tell us about your segment idea. We want to know what you want to see. Rogers TV, only on Rogers.
With NHL Center Ice, you get a premium ticket to the games you want every night of the season. Catch every key out-of-market matchup each week.